I'm going to be showing you this week how to clean your hot water tank on a hot water tank that has not been cleaned in 20 years. I was a little nervous at first because I have already done steps one through like three-ish to clean out this tank. And I was worried like, oh, is there still enough in there to warrant giving it a full clean? And then I stuck a camera down this bad boy. Check it out. So this is a hot water heater that I recently took out of a customer's RV. It had a number of things wrong with it, not the least of which was it desperately needs a cleaning. That wasn't the only reason we took it out. Like, I don't want people thinking I just replace water heaters willy-nilly, but I now wanna see if it is worth giving this thing a full vinegar rinse and doing a full tank flush on it. I've taken the water heating element out, which, oh my goodness, I will pop up photos of what that looked like when I took it out. I wish I had videoed me taking it out because I just watched hard water buildup fall off of it as I took it out of the tank. Oh my goodness, inside of the tank, it was like 10 times worse. Like what it looks like here on the bottom, the whole thing looked like that, which explained why this water heater was, for the most part working electrically it just wasn't heating the water for some reason and that's because this water heating element was so covered in hard water buildup that it physically couldn't transfer its heat to the water it had basically insulated the heating element but now I have my action cam I'm going to stick it down the hole that the heating element was in just because that's the biggest hole to the water heater and see what it looks like inside all right let's go in can we see anything oh my goodness yes we can Oh, wow. Dude, the bottom of this tank. You can't even see the bottom of the tank. Oh my goodness. Oh, I should stay in frame. Oh my goodness. It is just, it is solid buildup. Solid buildup, wall to wall. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Yeah, this tank needs a clean. Look at all of that. Oh, this is gonna be good. This is gonna be exciting. Yeah, it was really funny looking back on it. I was like, oh, I hope this tank is dirty enough to warrant cleaning. And then I stuck a camera down it and whoo. Yeah, there's like a solid inch of sediment at the bottom of this tank that we're gonna try to get out. So let's walk through today, step by step, how to do that. So step one, you actually want to just turn the tank off and let the water heater cool down completely. <laughs> if you're wondering, I'm actually looking at my step-by-step -step guide that I have here. If you want all of these steps written down on a handy cheat sheet, along with, I have a whole nother page where I'm gonna show you the parts you need to make this funnel system that I'm gonna show you in a minute. You can head on over to rvrepairwoman.com slash flush and I'll have this guide there for you. So yes, step one, we've cooled the whole tank down. That's happened already because this tank has been sitting on a shelf in my office for weeks, so it's plenty cool. Step two, we want to bypass the hot water heater. I have done that in mine by completely disconnecting it from the RV entirely. For you, you're most likely just gonna wanna find your water heater bypass valve. On my actual RV there's just like one handle behind the water heater that I would flip and that would be my water heater bypass a lot of people have like three valves hiding behind their water heater and they need to be in a specific orientation in order to bypass the water heater and then some people have a nautilus system there's a whole set of people that like to use the street near our house as like a drag strip and it drives me insane. We're just gonna deal with the audio for today. And then some people have a Nautilus system where they have a bunch of colored handles that all need to be facing certain directions. So you just need to look at your Nautilus system and it'll tell you what set of directions you need the handles to be to be bypassing the water heater. It may be called the winterize setting for your Nautilus system. But yeah, winterizing means bypassing this hot water heater. Ooh, step three, you're gonna remove either your plastic plug or your anode rod. So if you have a Dometic water heater, there's going to be a plastic plug somewhere on the front. That's what we're gonna remove. That's what I removed on this one because this is a Dometic water heater. If you have a suburban water heater, you will have a more metal looking plug that you're going to take out. That's gonna have like a rod sticking out of it when you remove it. That's called your anode rod. If you have never 
cleaned out your freshwater tank, then I'm guessing you have also never changed out your anode rod. Side quest here, your anode rod is a sacrificial rod that we put inside of hot water tanks to help avoid corrosion. The idea is that rod is going to corrode down as opposed to the tank. So you actually are supposed to change those out annually, most likely more often if you are someplace with really hard water, like here in Las Vegas. If you have a Dometic water heater, like this one that had a plastic plug, you do not need an anode rod. In fact, putting an anode rod in a Dometic water heater will jumpstart corrosion in your tank. Your tank is aluminum, it does not need it, okay? There are people out there that try to sell Dometic anode rods, and whoever is selling those is trying to scam you. You do not need an anode rod in a Dometic water heater. I cannot tell you how many customers that I have had to talk through this, so don't fall for that scam. Dometic water heaters do not need anode rods. In fact, you will cause more damage trying to put an anode rod in here. I will get off of my soapbox now. Thank you. That's just a little discussion about plugs and anode rods. Step four, you're going to give your tank a quick rinse out through that hole that you've created by removing the anode rod or the plastic plug. Ooh, you're gonna use, where is mine? <laughs> Found it. You're gonna use one of these. They're a special attachment that you can get at pretty much any RV supply store, camping store usually has them too, that is just gonna hook up to your hose. Come on, autofocus. Brings you down to a small nozzle head to try to increase the water pressure a little bit. So you're just going to take this, hook it up to a hose, and then spray all inside of your tank and just try to get as much crud out as you can using just a little bit of water pressure. Step number five, we are going to attach our PVC elbow contraption. So for that, you are going to need a connector that's gonna let you thread into the hole. For a Dometic water heater, that's going to be a half inch thread. For a suburban water heater, for the anode rod hole, that's gonna be a three quarter inch thread. You're then gonna need a small length of PVC. There's not a real science to this. An elbow and then a length of PVC that is taller than your water heater. Boom, we've made an L contraption. The PVC can be half inch, three quarter inch, basically whatever you can get the parts for at your hardware store of choice. And don't worry, in that cheat sheet guide, I have parted out for you like all of the parts you need to make this. I think I walk you through on there how to do it with three quarter inch PVC. The diameter of the PVC doesn't really matter. Just as long as you get the connector that's gonna go with whatever size hole you have. So we're gonna just take this piece, screw it into the hole. Then we're going to attach our smaller piece. Then we're gonna attach our right angle piece. And then we're gonna attach our long piece. And now we are ready to fill. You just wanna make sure when you have cut all of your PVC pipes that the top of your L bracket contraption reaches up higher than the top of the hot water tank. That's gonna make sure that we can fill the tank all the way later. Step six, we are going to add vinegar. We wanna add three to five gallons of vinegar into our tank. If you have a six gallon tank, you can be closer to the three gallon side things and if you have a 10 gallon tank you can be closer to the five gallons of vinegar side of things so you're just going to put a funnel into the top of your pvc contraption pour down the vinegar this is also we're going to figure out how watertight this water heater is because i had to plug up a couple holes this this guy had a lot of problems that's why we took him out of the rv that he was in but uh i'm hoping i've plugged up all the holes enough that it's going to hold liquid so Let's go, let's, let's pour it in. Ah. Oop, 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 okay, stay. Oh my God, I hate the smell of vinegar. I forgot how much I hate the smell of vinegar. Oh, this is gonna be an experience. Yeah, did I mention I'm not a pickles person? One little trick in the beginning when your water heater isn't as full, you can open up the P and T valve to allow air in at the top of the tank. And that's going to help it fill up faster because the air can get out faster. Oh my God, Ugh, only one liter down. <laughs> I have so many of these to go. Okay, oh, I should check in the back. Are we leaking madly? No, that's good. Okay, just keep pouring, Emily. Try not to smell it. It's kind of fun. Oops, ah. 
Okay, I have poured in the vinegar. I won't show you the back because it's kind of terrifying, some of the things I had to do in order to plug up this water heater, but they're all holding. We're doing good. Next, we just need to fill up the tank completely with water. Uh, I'm just gonna use that water from the hose because I don't really care how sanitary this tank ends up. It's never going back in an RV. For you, you might wanna use like some filtered water a little bit just to uh, have a sanitary situation. But yeah, I'm just gonna pour in from the hose. Let's do that. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> This handle, we haven't used this hose in forever. This handle leaks greatly, but I can't get it off. So this was the best solution I could come up with. Oh, um, there we go. Okay, ah. I'm just gonna do this till the whole thing fills up. This should be easier for you if you have a less shitty hose. Um, ah. Oh my goodness. Well, here I am. You'll know it's filled all the, whew, no. <laughs> that was my bad. Um, you'll know it's filled all the way, one, when it stops draining into the funnel, but also if you keep that P&T valve open, when it starts draining out of the P&T valve, you can close it and know that you're basically almost all the way full. So right now I have the P&T valve open, nothing's coming out of it. Oh, fun, fun, fun. I figured out because I'm doing it this silly way. Ah! Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, uh, I think it's, oh my goodness, almost full. Okay. I figured out that because I'm doing it this silly way, I don't need the funnel for filling up the water. I can just use my tank wand attachment. Oh, good, okay, we got water pouring out of the PNT valve. I think, whoo, I think we're, ah! <laughs> I think we're almost full. Then all you need to do is just turn your hot water heater on and let it sit, get nice and hot for about eight to 12 hours. This might be a great time to uh, have a glass of wine because uh, you're not gonna get hot water out of your tank for a little while. After those eight to 12 hours, you can then turn the water heater off and then just let it re-cool down overnight. It is significantly longer than eight hours later. Went to a friend's house to watch the UFC fights, but it's been at least eight hours. So I'm gonna turn this sucker off. And then I'm gonna go to bed and check on this in the morning. Curse you planes. Step seven, the next morning when the water heater has cooled back down, we then want to empty the hot water tank. Okay, it's the next day, the tank is completely cool to the touch. Ooh, yeah. Honestly, it's been overnight and this is still kind of a little warm. Let me check the back. Yeah, this thing got to rest overnight. This has been like probably 11 hours and it's still definitely a little warm. It's not hot, so I'm not worrying about it, but like definitely something to keep in mind. These things hold heat for a long time. So I guess it's time to empty it. I'm gonna try to empty it into this bucket to see if I can collect like all of the buildup and then weigh it at the end, or at least be able to show you like how much crud was in this water heater. We'll see if that theory works. Whoa, okay, that was exciting. There we go. Well, step one down, that's done. This smells like hot vinegar. Oh, I know I've said it before, but God, I hate the smell of this. So now we just let it drain. Let me feel. Yeah, it's warm, but it's not, like uncomfortably hot at all. Like this is actually a nice temperature. If it didn't reek of vinegar. And again, opening up that PNT valve is gonna help it drain a lot faster. So this is with the PNT valve closed. And that's with the PNT valve open. And to do that, I'm just coming up here. Closed. Open. Okay, so it's been like maybe 90 seconds and we've basically finished draining the tank. I can take out the PVC pipe. And you can just see the water that came out. I hope it's coming up on camera, but this water is so murky and cloudy. Like I cannot see the bottom of this bin, which is wild. Like that's the water you're drinking, trying to clean yourself with. And it's this stuff, guys. It's like this silt. So now it's time for the tank wand. 
Step eight, we're going to go back in and try to clean out the water heater as much as we can with our tank wand. Our goal is to get as much gunk and debris out of there as possible. There should be significantly more debris this time than there was the first time. <laughs> I'm gonna try to do this so I get the camera too wet. Look at how brown that water is coming out, guys. And all the silt coming out. Look at how brown that is. Oh my goodness. Okay, getting wet is part of the fun. Whee, okay. Woohoo. Oh my God, it's so much stuff coming out. <laughs> getting like deep in there. Whoa, this has just been for like maybe 30 to 60 seconds, not a ton. And the amount of silt, this is just so brown. This wire, water that's coming out. Oh my goodness. All right, I'm gonna let that drain. I'm gonna turn off this hose and we're gonna take even just about 30 to 60 seconds how it looks in that tank. Just look at all of that. Oh my goodness. We're still draining a little bit out and you can definitely go for much longer. I probably will. I just look at all of this silt. It's also why this guy probably couldn't get any water pressure. Like if all of this is just coating your pipes, you just can't get any water through. Let me try to take a look in the back and see what I can see. Okay, so this isn't how I would recommend you do this at home, but because my tank is not in an RV, I can just pull the water heater element out and get a really big hole so I can see in through the back. Ooh, oh my goodness. Oh, the water coming out is brown. Ooh, I should get a bucket. I should get a bucket. Didn't think this through. Bucket. I got a bucket. I got a bucket. Is this is gonna be a good height. Oh, it's a perfect height. Praise be to the five gallon bucket. Okay, now we can pull this guy out the rest of the way. Oh my goodness, look at the difference just on the heating element alone. Do you remember how covered this thing was before? And like this whole section was, you couldn't get any heat out of it. And that's all gone. Oh my goodness. Okay, okay. I can't see because I need a light. Oh my goodness, guys. Oh my goodness. Okay. Before, when I put my finger in through the back, I could like scoop up, just like scoopfuls of silt with my finger. And now, if I really reach, I bet my boyfriend who has longer fingers than me could maybe get to some, but I, I can't at all. My fingers are too short. Oh, oh my goodness, let's get a flashlight. Let's get a flashlight. Oh my goodness, it looks so much better, guys. Okay, so the sides of the tank, and I'm gonna try to get my camera in here. The sides of the tank definitely still have some water buildup, but so much less than it was. And like I said, when I first took out the heating element before, I didn't have to dig at all. Like it, there was silt buildup all the way to the top of this hole. So if you look at how far down, like how much silt there was in this tank. And now when I put a finger in, I can't feel any at all. I'm sure there's like, I can maybe feel just a little itty bit on the very edge of my finger, but like we took out almost all of that just in doing vinegar and like maybe 30 to 60 seconds with the tank wand. That's so good for how, how covered this tank was. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna try a little bit longer with the tank wand because that was not long at all. See if we can't get more out of here. There's definitely still a bunch in here, but so much less, so much less. All right, I'm gonna do a little bit longer. Oh, okay. Being wet's just part of the process, Emily, when you have a shitty hose. Okay, please. It's interesting because it's not like chunks are coming out. It's like it dissolved the chunks either into small enough pieces that you don't, like they're dissolved into the water or it's just like so small and like sandy and silty that it just comes out with the water. Okay, I've been going at it for just a couple minutes now. Look at all of the chunks that have come out. Oh my goodness, look at this. And look at how much, I know it's just a drizzle, but look at how much clearer this water looks coming out. Remember how gray and chalky it looked when we first started? Oh my goodness, guys, this is working. So I've been going at it a little longer. I wanna take a look inside. And I know you're not gonna be able to tip your tank like this or peer in the back with a flashlight, but that's the joy of having someone who has a tank fully removed for an RV. So they get to do all the stuff you can't do. There are definitely still piles of gunk in there, sort of what looked like sitting on the front of the 
pink and there's some caking the sides, but it's so much better. And the stuff that is sitting on the floor of the tank doesn't look like it's caked on or attached. Like it seems like it is loose. So if we just get it out, I don't know why I'm so invested in cleaning this tank now. It's never gonna go back in an RV, but now I'm invested. Yes, I'm coming in from the back where the hot water heater element came out. No, you're not gonna be able to do this in your house. You also hopefully haven't let your hot water heater sit uncleaned for 20 years. I'm giving this bad boy everything I've got. Oh, I'm covered in water. Covered in water. Oh, living the dream. Oh, I love this. I love this. This is what I've always wanted. Okay. Oh. Okay, I've got my action cam. I've got a flashlight. We're gonna see what we can see. Oh, actually pretty good. Okay. Oh, I don't even need the extra light. You can see that there's definitely still some piles of stuff. A lot of dirt, guys. Like, hopefully your tank is not as dirty as this one. So yeah, if we were really invested, we could probably fill this tank up one more time with water and vinegar and do the whole heating process again. And I bet we could get the rest of this off. But look at how much progress we made in just one cleaning. That's pretty amazing. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's what happens when you work in RVs too long, guys, is this is, this is the stuff that makes you giggle. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna let these two buckets of water settle and hope that the sediment is gonna settle to the bottom and then I can just skim the water off the top and we can see how much dirt and grime we did get out of this tank. Ah, oh, this was very exciting. This was how much buildup was in the bottom of that tank. And this wasn't even all of it. This was just what I was able to get out of the tank itself. There's also this like fine layer of silt that was uncollectible. I tried to get it with a filter, but it was so fine that it would just immediately clog the filter and wasn't collectible. A bowl. But it was all through, like all of the water that came out of that tank had some of that fine silt. And a good thing to know is that almost all of your faucets have some sort of built-in filter behind them, either like right at the mouth of the faucet, or if you think about it, like your shower faucet head has all of those little holes. Well, if any of them get covered or clogged up with this fine silt that is on this filter, then no water is gonna come out. So if you're having water pressure problems, there's a good chance that you need to clean your fresh water tank. And that's all I had to do for my water heater that's never going to be in an RV again. But if your water heater is going to stay in your RV and you would like to continue to have hot water, there's just a couple more steps you're gonna have to do. Then step number nine, replace the either plug if we have a Dometic water heater or our anode rod if we have a suburban water heater. This is why this is a great time to switch those out if you never have, because you've already taken them out anyway. So just put a new one in. They're relatively cheap. They are great protection for your water heater. Even if you have that Dometic plug, that's actually also supposed to be changed out like once a year. So tank cleaning should happen about once a year. That plug slash anode rod should be changed out about once a year. Just do it both at the same time. It's great. And then step number 10, you're almost done. What you are going to do is to turn your water heater bypass back off and then just run some of your faucets until you don't smell vinegar anymore. That's just gonna make sure that we get that vinegar out of the whole system before we start like drinking the water again. And you don't want that vinegary taste. At least I don't, that's not my vibe. Maybe if you're a big pickle person, you like a good vinegary aftertaste to your water. I don't. But yeah, that's it. Those are the 10 easy steps in order to flush out your hot water heater tank. I cannot tell you how many people don't know to do this. I like, I feel like every RV I run into, the tank has not been cleaned in decades, decades. And there's so much crap in there. So much crap. 
and you're not gonna be hard on yourself if you didn't already know this. There is such a learning curve to RVing and it is so easy to feel overwhelmed. That's why, oh my goodness, that's why I made a super easy free course called RV Basics to Badass that walks you through all of this stuff that you wish somebody had told you when you first got into RVing. I talk about in that course all the ways that being in an RV is different than being in a house, all of the maintenance that like nobody tells you you need to do and then you find out two decades later you wish you had washed out your water heater, and basic troubleshooting for everything. Like the first thing you should check on each appliance before you call a tech to see if you can't save yourself a buck and fix it yourself. If you feel like you need that in your life, head on over to rvrepairwoman.com slash badass and that totally free course is all yours. In the meantime, please consider hitting subscribe. I put out RV tips and tricks that most techs don't want you to know. This has been RV Repair Woman. You got this.